Magnus Carlsen can play the Karakhan, and so can you. But how? That's what this video is all about. We're going to start by looking at a top player, Magnus Carlsen, the way he plays the Karo Khan defense. E4, C6. And then later, we're going to see how a GM plays an IM. A 2000 rated player, 1500 and 1200. That is what this video is all about. We're going to start at the top, going through typical positions in one of the best openings for black. To make this video even more interesting, I'm going to hide one of the players. So first up, Magnus is black, but who has white throughout the video? I'll be giving some clues. So what's the point of this video? You are going to learn how to play the Kara Khan, how to play it against many setups that white can use, and we're gonna see it at a wide variety of levels. So here we go. E4, C6, so many ways to play. You can play the normal move, D4, but today his opponent plays knight c3. This is the first clue to who this guy is. He is known for sacrificing the exchange, giving up a rook for a knight in certain positions. Also, he is a top player from Bulgaria. The Karakon, knight out and now d5, attacking the center. White plays the two knights, getting both out straight away. You pin the knight, and after this, Magnus takes and challenges the center with knight f6. Another option is e6, but we're gonna get that soon. d4, another option, you can get the bishop out, get the pawn up, but d4 played and now e6. Typical structure to achieve with the Karo Khan defense because that bishop doesn't exist anymore. Therefore, it is very sensible to set up in a very solid way in the center. Take gigantic decision in my opinion why take because you are opening up the position for the bishop that your opponent doesn't have that's why we play this capture you don't want to play e5 because this is exactly what a Karakhan player wants it's this in my opinion when white has two pawns in the center like this i think a Karakhan player is very happy you've got targets c5 to break open the center Knight c6 to put even more pressure. The queen can come out to put pressure here, but also here. Example, the bishop comes out and now c5. So many moves to continue. And it's very easy for black to play. Now back to the game. Capture played. And now bishop comes out. Facing the king. Good option. Later, we're going to see this move being played on move 3. The exchange variation. Knight out. Pressure in the center. So why actually plays knight e2 to defend it? Knight b4, attack both. Check, block, and now got to tuck back the bishop to defend. Cool move by Magnus. Really cool tactical opportunity. I think something might have gone a bit wrong for white already. I don't remember ever seeing a top player play b5 in one go. You can't take, or else you just lose your rook. So going back a move, White has to play bishop back to b3, and now the knight can come back. Knight has done its job. White's going to kick it away next. The bishop can come out there for That is one option. <clears throat> the reason I'm making that suggestion is, after this move, both sides have healthy pawn structure in the center. Black plays bishop d6. Rook c8. Very useful move in the caro. Putting a rook on the half open file. Typical good moves. If you ask me, has Magnus done anything special in this game? No. That's why we can all play like Magnus, maybe up to move. 14. Queen g4 attacking g7. We're going to castle. Bishop h6. We're going to threaten checkmate in one move. And we stop it. We also hit the bishop. Drop it back. And now, queen g6 offering a trade. In my opinion, the game has just begun. Knight forcing the trade, take, take, and I think black has a free hand. When I say that, I mean black has no problems in the opening, and now plays a typical move in the caro. Classic way to play, and it's so easy. Move 19. Has Magnus made any brilliant move? In my opinion, no. Play like this when you have the caro. B4, typical move. We are going to chip away at the white structure. Knight d3, challenging. 
this. Take, take. Now this rook is very useful. When that knight moves, now we hit the pawn. Now here we're not going to take or else we fix white's pawns. Take, take. I mean, now we've got a target here. No way. So going back two moves, rook c7, and now rook c8. Typical move, doubling to hit that weakness. So white defends, knight b6. All five pieces in the attack, the pressure is building. Knight in. Okay, a lot of rerouting now. Let's see the dance. That knight restricts the two rooks. This knight attacks the rooks, really controlling lots of squares, really negating the play of the rooks. But it's not over. You can play f4, it's just that square's now weak, so not chosen. Rook moves, now knight comes in, hitting the bishop. Are we going to take it? Is Magnus going to take it? Another clue to who this opponent is, he's played for the world title. Knight c5, take, take. And now knight drops back, don't want this capture, and Magnus is actually, well, coming in. Bishop here trying to attack that pawn, okay. Bishop e7. One option was to play knight a6, hit the rook. Knight retreats back, which is a far lo more logical move. And a lot of dancing now, a lot of dancing, right? Critical moment. The guy now tries to open the position. You take. Now knight c6, good move. Attacking and defending, good move, attacking the bishop. Now after this, so many captures happen. Rook takes. Why has just chucked a knight? No. It's because after this exchange fest, when I say that I just mean lots of pieces come off. Well, what's going to happen? Take. Uh, hold on. So we take. And now you don't take this, or else you lose this. Take. And now keep the rooks on. Magnus tries to win this. Okay, let's keep going. So you take me, I take you. And now he takes. Right now we get this rook end game. A5, right. It's just four versus four. Should it be a draw? Yeah, most of the time, but the guy is being a bit too aggressive. No need to push your pawn f4. The reason is, I've highlighted so many squares. The king is now weak. You can see the green circles. But really, it's the red points you've got to worry about. Those two pawns are now weak, and Magnus takes advantage. Rook a4, first you hit that pawn. And actually, maybe that's it. Actually, after f4, maybe you forgot this swing. The reason... It's not just this, it's because of this check. The king actually needs to stay on that pawn. We take with check and now we just run it home. Okay, here you can take and then king here or f6, <coughs> h4. Now why? Because if take, you can now get the king in. This is the idea. One, two. And you can't come up because the rook gives a check. So let's say here, defending classic tactic in the rook endgame. The rook moves, check, the king moves, and you get a queen just in time. Game over. Now back to the game, let's go back a few moves. At this point, h4, Magnus finds this tactic in the rook end game. We come back, a little, a bit of shuffling, we're gonna take that one right. Oh yeah, there's a brilliant move here, I just wanna talk, just wanna mention this, e5 is an absolutely brilliant move, pointed out by Stockfish. If you take, we come up these four. And if you push, well, we're going to run. And we got two runners, and you can't, there's nothing here. There's nothing here for white. So that's a brilliant move. Okay, at this moment, right here, take. Now that pawn drops, and, well, they're going to drop. Take. And here, good move from Magnus, F5 blocking, and now throwing a check, and then come back where two pawns up. Let's see the rest. How does Magnus finish it off? Pretty cool here. He actually gives up one of the pawns. Why? Because he knows he's going to cut the king off. That king is totally cut off. Shielding the king. Shield. We're just in time, actually. That's the funny thing. E3, game over. And the guy resigned. Let's just keep going on a little bit. Here, I think we just go forward. If we come over, we can push. Here, I think we can just sidestep. We're good. Or, actually, that check is better. The king moves and then the king can come up. So that is how Magnus won. Okay, so here is the opponent. Turns out he was playing Veselin Topalov in the Croatia Grand Prix. Next game. 
Now, to make this interesting again, I'm going to pick a different variation of the Carol Khan and two different players. We are going in reverse in the rating. So here we go, e4, c6. And this time, I mean, there's many options. We're going to see them in the other games coming up. Knight c3 is so popular, but in this one, I want to pick this where we exchange and then we get two pawns in the center, the pan of attack, defend, two knights out, just like white and now g6. Why do I want to look at this line? Because I play this as black. I want to see a top player playing it. By the way, with white, we have Rasmus Svan, 2649, German grandmaster. And white, well, you're going to have to wait and see. Is white higher rated or lower rated than Rasmus? Take, take, and now we got pressure. Bishop can come out, attacking the center, along with this knight. The knight might move back, the knight might take. Queen b3, white is putting early pressure in the center. Defend the knight, pin, doesn't matter, get out of the way. We are one move away from castling. Okay, here we go. Now, threatening to win a pawn. White damages the structure with bishop takes knight. I always hate these kind of positions where you get this weird backward c pawn which can't really move because you get taken. And then you get this weird bishop in front of the pawns. But that is exactly the reason I want to go through this game because it's so, it's really nice a pawn break coming up. Rook e1, good move, controlling the e5 square. Pawn break coming up, you stop it, classic move. Another option is knight a4 as well, both are good. Knight e4 makes more sense, and now rook b8, hit the queen. Rook, d, rook d8, pretend to hit the queen, once there's some pressure. Now after b3, brilliant move, in my opinion, brilliant move. This bishop is terrible. If you go here, well, I think that's so ugly, isn't it? I mean, you basically just lost the bishop. That's why I hate these kind of structures. That's why I'm so glad I found this game. This bishop is terrible. This pawn is in the way. So what do you do? You just give it up. I love this idea. You can't take because you just lose your rook. But after the game, now this opportunity is allowed. Knight c3. By the way, you couldn't play it on the previous move. Here. You just get taken. So that's why we throw in this brilliant move, c5. Hit the queen. And then drop it back. I have never, ever seen an idea like this. Knight, bishop, rook on the pawn. This is one reason I wanted to go through this game. Never seen this type of maneuver before. Defend, and now bishop here. Imagine if there was a silly pawn here. Then this bishop would be awful. But now it's controlling this wonderful diagonal. We damage the pawns. By the way, you can't move the knight because in this position because your center just totally falls. One, two. Here, pressure here, game over. A knight is going to fall very soon. The rook might even come back. If knight here, we can grab it. And now, brilliant move. I just turned on the engine because I wanted to. I wanted to see a knockout. What a tactic. Never seen this before. Rook and queen hit that pawn. Bishop also hits the rook. Beautiful tactic. So let's go back a few moves to this moment. Here. Take. Knight c3. And now we come back. And we damage the structure. Take, take. And now take. Queen e4. Get out of the way. Black has four pawns. White has three. And white is so weak. Also... You've got bishop and rook defending your asset on d4. So white takes it. Take, take. Queen drops back and now queen h4. Bishop h6 is now a threat. That's the blue arrow. The queen defends the rook along with the bishop. So you cut off that attack. Bishop h6 is not possible because you lose your rook. So that's why we defend our rook now. Bishop h6 is possible. Rook c4. So we get out of this attack. So rook c4. Good move offering a trade. Rook d3. Great move, not trading, because your rooks are so powerful, you might have some attacking chances. The king is too weak. Rook d3, great move. Queen g5 offering a trade. Take, take. Defense. The knight defends the pawn, so you kick it away, and then you can take. Hit. In. Beautiful. What a bishop, man. What a bishop. Defend, attack. Rook here can come back. That rook can come in the game. Perfect position for black. Drop the rook back. 
drop the bishop, hit the rook, and now rook in. Okay, let's keep going. I've just highlighted it. Four versus two, it's over. It should be over most of the time. Okay, let's keep going. In this moment, white was threatening this tactic in order to win the rook. So black played a nothing move. Check is game over. It's so easy to lose any position. So going back two moves here. Okay, let's drop the king back. Check. Let's offer a trade. Take, take. And the cool thing is this bishop, it can just come back. Nothing's changed really, except it has. A pair of rooks have come off. You've still got four versus two on this side of the board. White has his active rook being traded off. Hit the knight. Okay, now even better, get the rooks off. Two versus one, okay, but it's four versus two. Okay, let's keep going. And now we just keep pushing here. White, I think, missed a chance. It's just a bit too slow here. I think white missed a small chance here, but that's not the point of this video. Here, white went king here, but you are just too far away. By the way, this was a titled Tuesday match, so three minutes plus two seconds per move. G4 is too slow. You can't take because you just run. So going back a move here, the king had to stay back. Now it runs back. And the funny thing is these two pawns completely cut off the king. You can't even get close. This bishop also controls this wonderful diagonal holding these pawns as well. King comes in. Now we try to get a pass pawn. Got to stop it. And now we get this situation where five pawns against the knight. <laughs> yeah, five pawns. Push. And we're good. Two versus one. Two versus zero. The king can't actually come in. And it's one against nothing. The king can also join in. Push, push. And now we get the king in. Just total domination, really. So, who do you think is higher rated, white or black? A few more moves being played. We're going to check, and then we push. Turns out Rasmus Fan was playing 2445. I am. In this game, he got outclassed. Next one. Here we go again. So, we, we keep going in reverse rating order. So, next type of Karapar position to check out is knight c3. This move, it stops the bishop coming out early. Do you remember in the first game when Magnus played Topalov, we had this, this pin. But in this position, we don't, we can't actually get this bishop out to a useful square at the moment. So we got to play another move. This is possible, but then you get hit. You want to deal with this. You want to deal with this. It's now a totally different opening. It's a French. It is possible. But if we want to play a Karakhan, we're going to take in the center. So white has 20. White's rating, I mean, is 2200. But what is black's rating? I've highlighted this pawn because as a Karakhan player, I really like when white has a pawn in the center. This pawn is strong, right? Well, yes and no. It's actually a target for every Karakhan player. I look forward to my opponents playing a move d4 or move 2. d5, take 10. Knight f6 because that's a target. Now, this is the reason I've been playing the Karakhan. It's because you get this really sharp line to take and now take we have four pawns in front of the king after this video please try this opening that's the best way to learn how to play play this opening in your own games c3 pawn chain just like we saw in the first game face the king face the king castle four pawns in front of the king queen c2 check knight e2 and now this really cool move h5 just flicking it in so popular this is now an, an attacker so if you castle you could play h4 you could tuck the bishop back queen out you could even play queen here so then you attack this you can go h4 many ways to continue so an aggressive move you by the way you don't want to play a move like g6 that's too negative you're basically telling white to play h5 so we don't want that so really cool move. Please try this in your own games. H5. I played this many times. Knight d7. Where's this knight going? Here? Here? Maybe. But after castle b5, black's play is really easy. The cool thing here is now white played bishop f4, which is a classic tactic. Missed by black. If you take, we're just going to take back. 
so it's time to remove the defender. Brilliant move here, missed. Rook takes e2. Hitting the queen. You've got to take back, and now what's happened? You've got two pieces. Bishop and knight for the rook. Maybe this is why the guy didn't do it, because it looks very dangerous, but there's a really cool backward move here. Bishop h6, and perhaps this is why he missed it. By the way, another option is to carve the file. This one I don't like too much because you're allowing the guy in. But the king does escape. He might even go here and then keep playing this kind of position. I like the other variation actually, this really, really cool backward move. But maybe that's why he didn't play it. After this, just a normal move facing the king. Take, take. And notice in this middle game, both bishop and queen are facing each other's king. Hit the pawn, and now queen d5. Well, whose queen and bishop alignment are more powerful? Actually, black. Queen and bishop attack that pawn, but these two are attacking nothing. It's like you want to switch them around, and then it will be more aggressive. But black is the one with the correct bishop and queen alignment. And guess what? It's not only attacking this pawn, we're attacking g2 as well. All the way. You block it, flick in a5, you come and cash in there but a5 played can't take it that's the other good thing actually that knight is not great now knight f1 a4 trying to open it up b4 and now he takes hit the rook okay now you hit the queen drop it back and rook g1 threatening to uh, attack the queen so h4 how cool is that you got four pawns in front of your king and you actually use it as an attacker by the way do you remember the previous game in that end game, the guy also had four pawns versus two. Looks like this is a winning majority for Karo Khan players. King goes to a1, which looks like an innocent move. Totally innocent. White can't really do too much. Put the king in the corner. But looks can be deceiving. This guy now played a brilliant move using the tactic on the file. Now's your chance to pause the video. I'll give you five seconds. Can you find a really cool move for black? Bishop b3, winning the rook. You can't take because it's now check and you actually win the queen. So going back two moves here. Move the queen, we're going to take uh, take the rook. Knight might come in. It's never uh, too late to just chuck everything. If you play an innocent move like this, you've lost. How tough is chess? The queen, you just come in. You can't take it due to the bishop. you got your pin on the g file. So, knight here, and now you just sidestep. Take, now g5, cool move, really cool move by the way, because you actually stop the queen coming in. Also, the point of g5 is, uh, well, you defend that pawn as well. Okay, really cool move coming up. Black is totally winning, but I really like the class act shown by this guy. Takes with a rook, unnecessary, but I like it. Still good, clean, professional. Giving back the exchange. Now, what's the point of this? Well, the queen's come off, and now you take. Four versus two on the king side. So we're winning in this domain. Three versus four. So we are also winning in this domain. So what on earth am I talking about is because white doesn't have a pawn break. That's the key idea. There is no good move. You can't play c4 to get your pawns rolling. So we are winning on every domain. King side, queen side, and guess what? In the center as well. Our rook is more active, controlling an open file, and white's rook is on a rubbish square. It's on a D file. What are you doing? So king here, finish it off, get the king in, and now really cool moment. White is totally lost. He just plays that, and now uh, here, uh, yeah, take, and now check. That's a cool moment to finish. Why? Yeah, okay. I mean, white's just so many pawns down but the point is when the king moves now we just attack both with c3 so it's a call cool finish after this moment the guy resigned now's your chance to guess white's rating so have a number in mind and here we go white actually had similar rating to the guy but it didn't look like it did it it looked like one guy outplayed the other guy just like in the previous game when rasmus van 26 49 got outplayed by the 24 45 gm against im next one 
So here we go again, Carol Khan. But we're going to pick a different kind of middle game. There's so many ways to play this opening. Next setup, another really popular way to play is Bishop d3. Another really good move. I think just by explaining this, I think I might have come up with something. It looks like White's third move should be to limit the scope of this piece. If we, if you can play a third move where this bishop can't come out to a good square, that might be a good line against the Karo. Bishop here, really good move. Knight out. Classic pawn chain like we've seen in previous games. And now Queen C7, what's the point of this? d5 might be a break we're delaying this we want white to make a mistake and the funny thing is white makes a mistake now because now you can pin so at the moment white's rating is 1977 and black's rating here's a clue black is either much higher rated or much lower rated and i'll tell you at the end of the game another move is 92 then bishop f4 is possible then you might go e5 now it's such a big deal to stop black getting that bishop out that you might flick in a move like h3, which is another way to play. But in this game, knight 3 was played. That's why I give it a question mark. You might think that's harsh, but in terms of the structure, playing a normal knight move is actually really bad. Pin uh, the knight. Classic way to defend. Classic pawn structure like we've seen in the previous games. Remember the first game, Magnus had it as well. We can all play like Magnus up to a point. Knight one really creative actually. Maybe he's going here and then castle. I really like this option. Drop the bishop back, which is another class move, I would say. I don't know if I would um, put, I mean, this guy's rating to play that move. Now, why just deliberately retreat the bishop? Okay, classic move, just like we saw in the previous games, is to offer a trade. This is white's really good piece. Black's piece, black's bishop has come out. We're finding a way to get that off. Castle, very aggressive. I would definitely castle this side. The reason it's too aggressive is because black's play is going to be on this side of the board anyway. Forgive the second blue arrow. It's really the first one. You want to get b4 in, which is exactly what we saw Magnus do in the first game. Get this pawn break in, chip away at the structure, and you're just playing a good game in the Karakhan. It's this pawn break where you get a chance to create a lot of play. You're solid here, so there's your break. Knight b4, what a move. Except it doesn't work, that's the funny thing. Check. The guy comes back. So, what do you guys think? Do you think black is much higher rated or much lower rated based on this move? It's just a one move tactic. Can't do this. By the way, if you do this, I think you take that one. Yeah, because you can't take due to the pin. So they come off and then the game goes on. So going back a few moves. In this moment, check, knight drops back, take, take. A6, B5 coming up. See, that's the funny thing. Not, not right now, but I would seriously consider a move like B5 and just give up the pawn. Just so, so then it's fast castle maybe the b files open i got counter chances it's only a pawn and your king is there anyway i'd seriously consider flicking in a pawn sacrifice like that but anyway the guy prepared it like a normal person knights defend each other just like white had the two knights defending and then well we saw that knight here now hit the queen okay now filling that square might not be best why because the pawn structure changes but to black's advantage take now bishop here the pawn breaks are now well there are two options and it's just so easy for black to play and no easy pawn breaks for white you hit the knight it drops back offer a trade they come off and now queen c4 brilliant move hit this which is where the king is and you hit g4 as well brilliant move classic queenside play take the pawn challenge both if you take, we're just going to go for this. Hit. Rook. And come back. Yeah, professional really. He's just taken this pawn. He's come back. Two pawns up. That pawn is about to drop as well. Queen c7. Dropping the queen back. Yeah, possible. I don't mind that move. I might even have just taken that one. Anyway, take. And now we take in the center. Can't take yet. Let's grab that knight off. Dun, dun, dun. Okay, 
h4, okay, let's see the rest. Block the file, come up with the king, professional. f6, I like it, doesn't matter, take. That's dangerous, so we stop it. Nice move, defense along the second rank. White, black has four pawns in front of the king. I think black is pretty safe. Push, double attack, here, here, there's going to be a threat. Okay, we're going to take that one, take, take, get the rooks off, and we're good. Well, let's just quickly see the rest. I mean, he should resign, to be honest, but we just keep pushing. Two versus zero, that pawn is not, nah, it's too far away, no chance, really. Let's just see the rest. Here, get another queen, shield it, get a queen. Yeah, I mean, you can't run away from the checks. I've got two queens, mate. You can keep running. Both queens are defended. I think that's quite important here. So then the king can just go on a journey anywhere, really. Get the queens in, throw in a check, game over. Because wherever the king moves here, here, then the other queen can come in. Right. So have your guesses ready. Do you think black is higher rated or lower rated? And here's the reveal. Turns out black was rated 1653. Now we have the final game. Yeah, huge difference, 300 points really. But it didn't look like it, did it? It didn't look like it at all. And now we have one more position. We keep going in reverse in ratings. One of the popular ways to play against the Caro is the advance, just getting a lot of space. I really like seeing this because these are targets. Yeah, okay, why is a lot of space? But now I can aim for something. You could say get the bishop out of the pawn chain, which is really what we spoke about in the last game. If white has a good third move in order to stop this bishop coming out, then that could be a nice line against the Karo. Knight d2. Really funny move, isn't it? So just to say white's rating is 1372 and black, do you think they're higher rated or lower rated? I will reveal it at the end. e6. What's the point of this move? Knight b3. You're stopping the pawn break, which black wants to get in, in order to free their position. Knight d7, we want that break. Stop it. So that's a move, just to encourage that break later. But knight's out first. Classic situation, two knights in front of the king and the queen. Knight here, controlling this square. We're putting pressure in the center. Pawn break coming up, pawn break coming up later. Bishop here, and now the bishops come off. I wouldn't play this move because you're just trading a pair of bishops off. A better move is here. Keep the tension. That could be a target, by the way. That's why. You're just trading off that bishop. So, bishops come off. Now, well, a4 is coming, so stop it. Now, rook b8. So, looking at the last two moves, I don't really like what the 1372 has done. I wouldn't have done this. I would seriously consider rook here, and that's your pawn break. That's just a random move. I mean, it's like you hope the guy doesn't play it. And now you can get in what you want, but... When you play a move like a5, I've only got one idea, a4. You're basically telling me what I'm going to do next, so I wouldn't play that move. It's too obvious. Rook b8, are we aiming for b5? No, because if you play b5 now, take, this is under attack. So you've got to play an ugly move like this, then you've got this pawn, which is a weakness you might even hit with c4. Hit both, defended. Nope, it's not great. So going back two moves castle right let's keep going now the break is achieved which is interesting why did he take am i missing something why didn't he take this ah take this way right okay that one that pawn drops a very clever move from this guy c5 uh, also if you don't do anything c4 so really clever play queen here attacks this defend if you take i'm going to take this way that's very important. And now the knight drops all of a sudden. Here, you're going to drop. So going back a few moves. Here, b6 defends everything. Rook c1. h6. I mean, nothing really. Just waiting. Queen drops back. No need. The queen was so well placed. You don't need to dislodge it. By retreating unnecessarily, by the 1300, c4. Attack the knight and now b5. But guess what? This actually works out in White's favour. This isn't the way, isn't the best way to go because after take take. No, not knight f1. That's a blunder. Even though it looks alright because you defend. You've got to play a move like b3. You can't take because your rook is hanging. And actually, after this move, destruction now force. 
something has gone wrong for black. So if we go back two moves, let me just check. In this point, I think black's really good. Here, B5, take. Oh, you got to play a move like A4. Oh, that's class. That's class. I just turned on the engine just to check because I wasn't sure. That's class. Yeah. Because now there's no pawn break. Beautiful. Look at this. Look at this structure. Can't play B4 or whatever. Yeah, on pass on. And then you get this beautiful situation. Connect 5. I see. Now you do this and then this drops. Wow, beautiful. Now here, B3, the engine just loves this for white, the structure is falling apart. However, going back a few moves in this moment, knight f1 played. Now queen, too much pressure on this point. Defend, triple. It's so easy sometimes to play the caracom, that's why I recommend it. A4, bishop c1. Is this how to play chess? Oh. Just defending and you're just waiting for black to come in really with everything the only piece that's not doing anything is the knight a free flick that in really cool move because here take and now even the knight comes in brilliant move because the knight now stops this bishop controlling that square in beautiful it's like the first game with magnus against vessel to to pile off i know it's not the same rating but can you see that Black is still playing in the same way as Magnus. I know it's a huge difference in rating. But all the pieces are in the attack. I include the pawns. Everything. Everything is in the attack. Well, maybe except that one. Knight f1. Okay, we grab and then we come in. So time to cash in. And that's exactly what the guy does. Take and then take. Take. We're in. Okay, let's keep going. Offer a trade. Nice one. He just trades. Now, if this knight comes in, maybe here or here to take, we are totally winning. Drop it back. There's no good way to attack that, actually. There's no knight move that's possible. Defend the pawn. Unnecessarily. Yeah, you don't really need that. You just drop it. So that was a wasted move. Just in time. You see, even when black wastes a move, you're still winning. That's how dominating the position is. Game over. It just drops. Get a queen, all right, we keep playing. Let's just see the rest, check. We can check, we are good, check. That's really cool, I like that. Using the pin on the far class. Okay, we're a rook up, but okay, yeah, you still gotta win, we're gonna pick that knight up. Okay, we get a queen and we are, we're coming home soon. We're winning now, check, get the rook in, cool. So here's your final moment to guess the player's rating. Do you think higher or lower than 1300? I'll give you a few seconds guess now and here we have it. Turns out the guy was rated 1210 in an online match. So I hope you guys have really enjoyed this video. The point of it was to see how every player from Magnus Carlsen to GM to IM to 2200 to 1600 to 1300 all play the Karakon. Let me know what opening you want to see next. Give me some feedback in the comments. How can I improve this type of video?